Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, please accept my best wishes as you steer the work of the Security Council for the month of July. My respectful greetings to members of Security Council. My heartfelt greetings to my brother, Mr. Sami Shukri, and my sister, Minister Maryam Al Sadiq. I also recognize and thank His Excellency, Her Excellency Inger Andersen, and the special envoy, Parafit Jaffrey, for their participation. And also, I appreciate the representative of the AU chair addressing this August gathering. In this meeting and the deliberation of the Council, where a hydroelectric dam is under scrutiny in an unprecedented manner. I'm not sure if I'm not the first water minister addressing this council. Ethiopia believes it is unfitting use of the time and resources of the UN Security Council to discuss the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. Having said that, Mr. President, it is an honor for me to speak before this august body, voicing the concerns and the just causes of my country, Ethiopia. A year ago, on 29th June 2020, under your presidency, council members encouraged Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan to continue negotiations to resolve the outstanding issues and expressed support for the African Union-led process to facilitate further talks. Ethiopia took part in the negotiation with renewed commitment and good faith to reach a mutually acceptable negotiated outcome under the auspices of the African Union. I would like to pause to give the Republic of South Africa a special recognition and our thanks for effectively facilitating the negotiation under the end of its African Union chairmanship in February 2021. Similarly, Ethiopia commends and stands with the Democratic Republic of Congo, the current chairperson of the African Union, for its relentless effort under trying circumstances, including the repeated disruption of the negotiations. Mr. President, we are dealing with a hydroelectric dam project, which is not the first of its kind in Africa or in the world. We are building a reservoir to store water that will generate electricity by heating turbines. For your information, the GERD reservoir is two and a half times smaller than that of the Aswan Dam in Egypt. Perhaps what puts the GERD in distinction from other projects is the extent of hope and aspirations it generated for 65 million Ethiopians that have no access to electricity. It is also unique because the construction of this $5 billion dam is financed by the blood, tears, and the sweat of ordinary Ethiopians. The GERD is a right dam built at the right place for the betterment of people in the broader region. <clears throat> Our inability to utilize the Nile River so far is deeply embedded in the psychology of our people. Two famous Ethiopians' proverb underscores this point. Go one bishan kesat abate ebot or ya bailij wahat amma. Both roughly translate to the irony of the tribulations of a poor man who stood in the middle of a river and lamented about experiencing extreme thirst. To change this generational lament, we have nowhere to look but the Abai or Nile Basin, in which two-thirds of Ethiopia's water resources is found. 
in this mighty river, which we share with our neighbors. Our people so hope to extricate themselves of darkness and march towards it by building the guard. The dam has the fingerprints of Ethiopian, Ethiopia's farmers, pastoralists, daily laborers, students, businesswomen and men, and the diaspora throughout the world who ache out of he, who ache out a living in extremely difficult circumstances. In equal, if not exceeding terms, Ethiopians have best wishes and neighborly care for their compatriots in Egypt and Sudan. We have all the intention to live together in peace and cooperate for our mutual benefit. The GERD demonstrates this core principle of collective well-being and prosperity. That is why the GERD is one of the regional integration projects under PIDA, the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa. Mr. President, Africa, the cradle of mankind, is currently the youngest continent in the world. Africa is set to reap its demographic dividend by investing in its use. Similarly, my country, Ethiopia, has 70% of its population under the age of 30. <clears throat> More than 100,000 Ethiopians graduate from higher education every year. Not only that, about 30 million Ethiopians are in schools at various levels of education. Catering to the needs of this growing population is an imperative and existential matter for my country. The lives of Ethiopians that languish on the Sahara Desert attempting to cross into Europe, the migrants in the Middle East that sacrifices their use to bring a better day for their families, the young boys and girls in migrant prison in Africa and beyond, the barefooted migrants that you, are, you see returning to their homeland in mass deportation from the Middle East deserve a dignified life. The GERD is a project, a people's project, and our humble attempt to realize this dream. Against all odds, we chose to act and act in spite of the arduous obstacles we faced. Instead of coalescing in this challenge, we struggled to prevail. Little by little, we are overcoming. Mr. President, unfortunately, we are here because Egypt and most recently Sudan have expressed their opposition to this hydroelectric dam. It is important to note that our two neighbors have large and small dams and the canals they have constructed with absolute disregard to the right of other riparian countries and rejecting Ethiopia's repeated plea for consultation. After a series of initiatives to address the concerns of our neighbors in good faith, we are compelled to conclude that their objection is not as such directed at the guard, but rather to stop any water used by Ethiopia. The fact of the matter is, we have no viable alternative. Unlike Egypt and Sudan, Ethiopia has no considerable groundwater reserve. We also don't have seawater to desalinate. Nearly 70% of my country's water is in the Nile Basin. Even if we want to, even if we try, we cannot avoid utilizing the Nile River. In fact, Constructing dams is only part of our focus. Our main objective is maximizing our scarce water resource by rehabilitating nature and preventing further depletion through our Green Legacy Initiative, a prominent initiative of my Prime Minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed. With an overall goal of planting 20, billions, 20 billion trees in five years' time, we planted 10 billion trees in the last two years. This, is, this initiative, which also consists of a seedling sharing outreach with our neighbors, is part of the Green Belt Initiative of the African Union. 
We call upon Egypt and the Sudan to join this afforestation program that improves resilience and increase water availability. Mr. President, Ethiopia believes that an agreement is within reach given the necessary political will and the commitment to negotiate in good faith. We have already reached an understanding on a considerable number of the issues. The African Union is seized of the matter and is ably facilitating our negotiation. That is why it is regrettable that our sisterly countries opted to bring the matter to the Security Council. I will not drag you to a discussion of issues on my, my usual disposition to explain technical details on dams and hydrology. However, I want us to truly appreciate the subject matter we are compelled to discuss, and we are speaking of a hydroelectric dam. For the first time since its establishment, this council is being asked to pronounce itself in a water development project. The Security Council is a political and security organ. It is unhelpful and misguided to present an issue that requires a hydrotechnical solution to this global security body. Mr. President, it must also be clear that the underlying problem for the difference between the three countries is the quest to preserve colonial and monopolistic status quo over the Nile. The approach of trying to solve problems using the mindset that creates them is what blocks our consensus on the ground. The Security Council is faced with the question to determine whether or not Ethiopians have the right to utilize the Nile River. On behalf of all Ethiopians, I implore our friends in this Council and in this wider international community to answer this question. Do Ethiopians have the right to drink from the Nile? Mr. President, as a point of information, allow me to share with you the latest status of the African Union-led negotiation. On 24 June 2021, the AU Bureau of Assembly convened a meeting to discuss various issues, including the GERD. The President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, His Excellency Felix Tshisekedi, briefed the Bureau and introduced his plans for the upcoming negotiations. Unfortunately, the Republic of Sudan didn't attend this high-level meeting. With the absence of Sudan in the Bureau meeting, the two countries have blocked the nine meetings since the June 2020. We should learn by now. Ethiopia doesn't respond well to undue political pressure and interference. Ethiopia will continue to exercise maximum restraint and showcase cooperation because we are forever linked by this majestic river. Whether we like it or not, we will continue to drink from the same river and must learn to live together as a neighbor. I reiterate,